so welcome to this class where we will be discussing further about fuzzy logic whatever little bit we have discussed about fuzzy logic with that background we will not talk about uh, one term which is used a lot when application of fuzzy logic is done and that is known as inferencing in inferencing what we do is that we use existing data existing data to infer new knowledge so in this lecture we will come to this idea of inferencing and before that we will see that what fuzzy logic is supposed to do so fuzzy logic is supposed to do computing with words and as far as computing with words is concerned we are not yet uh, having a technology where we can do computation with words why it is so because our computers present day computers don't have that capability to process words so they cannot process words so question arises that nowadays whatever uh, whatever studies are being done related to languages like natural language uh, processing so in this what we do so in this whatever techniques we have developed uh they are not really processing words processing words is different uh it is it needs special types of computers we don't have these computers nowadays because if you have these computers then you will be able to process linguistic variables so what does it mean what is the meaning of linguistic variable so linguistic variable uh, is a variable is a variable whose values are not numbers then what these values are so we can say that values are not numbers but words or sentences and where are these words and sentences these are in a natural language or even artificial language artificial language this was proposed by uh l a jade who was the father of fuzzy logic he came up with this i this idea uh in around 1965 or so and this idea was over of the first three papers of l a jade and this idea this concept of linguistic variable was very new in the mid 70s of the past century it was something outrageous now 
uh, we can further discuss linguistic realism. So we can say that how to represent linguistic realism. So linguistic variable is a collection of things is a collection of uh, uh, five things a variable x a set of terms tx and a universe of discourse u a set of syntax rules which we call G and a set of semantic rules which is M. So this is uh, a set of semantic rules. This G is a set of syntax rules. These we will discuss with, an, with the help of an example. And U is of course universe of discourse, as you know. And this x is a variable, a variable name you can say. And then tx is a set of terms. In conventional sets, uh, we in the domain of conventional sets, when we work with the simple variables which have a variable name and they have a value, they I mean, a, sim, a given sim, a simple variable has a value, that's all. But in linguistic variable, uh, it's not so simple in linguistic variable it is complicated and it's a representation of the way of that way in which the humans convey the informations through their languages. Human beings convey a lot of information through language and human language is highly sophisticated it's compressed, it's ambig ambiguous, it's vague, and so on. So in a way, in a nutshell, we can say that uh, the human language is complicated and its representation uh, through linguistic variable is also uh, complicated. So it's going to have more terms when it is defined as compared to simple variables where a variable name is given and that is uh, instantiated by a value. But here, if we have a linguistic variable, then we have these many terms associated with that. One example of the, uh, very simple example of the human language is that uh, terms which are vague, like a little bit to the left of this building. Now, what is the meaning of this? a little bit to the left or if I say someone is not that old what does it mean it's not going to be simple description these descriptions we use on daily basis and we as a human being we don't have problem with this so human communication is there with the vagueness and and human beings communicate with the 
the vagueness through the vagueness of the language. Now to put it into a computer, you have to come, uh, you have to come up with something that makes it more accessible to the computers. And we know that computers cannot process words. So we'll have to have some mechanism through which they can process the words. And that is through linguistic variables with the help of linguistic variables. So we will be taking one example of linguistic variables. So like this term temperature. Now in this term temperature, uh, we, we describe its intensity in many ways using many hedges and uh, which we call linguistic hedges and those terms are, are like uh, hot. We are talking about linguistic hedges. So linguistic hedges or descriptions are like this hot, warm, cold, cool, very hot, extremely hot. We are using many adjectives. We are using many intensities. We are using their combinations. And human beings are quite creative in about the languages in making different terms, descriptions, intensities using adjectives. So we will take some one simple set of such terms and for example let us take very cold and cold cool war and hot these five terms we have taken. Here you can notice that we have taken uh, five terms which is odd. So these terms are deliberately kept odd so that we have something in the middle of the extremes. Extreme terms, terms like very cold and hot. This is going to be the middle term. Now, this will be calling, this is our linguistic variable. These are our set of terms. Which we have seen earlier. This is linguistic variable, set of terms. Now let us define a, a number range corresponding to these temperatures. So suppose our temperature is going to vary for which we will be assigning these terms. So suppose it starts with the very cold is going to be suppose minus 5 and then it goes up to suppose 35 degrees centigrade and we have corresponding members of functions suppose it is Five. So temperature lower than 5, we are going to assign this very cold term. 
and then we have 5 degrees centigrade the difference of 10 is here then another 10 degrees we have 15 degrees centigrade then another term we have 25 degrees centigrade so this term corresponds to this temperature minus 5 degrees is very cold and temperatures lower than this but temperatures higher than minus 5 degrees are having membership grade of membership less than 1 this value corresponds to 1 and the second temperature this we are assigning to cold and here it is having membership value 1 but if any temperature we take which is less than 5 its membership grade is going to reduce less than 1 and if any temperature higher than this is taken up to 15 degrees then again its grade of membership is going to fall and we are assuming that that any temperature between minus 15 degrees to 5 degrees can be called cold can be known as cold but with varying degree of membership similarly we assign this cool suppose this 15 degrees and this varies means any temperature from 5 degrees centigrade to 25 degrees can be called cool but with varying membership uh, grade of membership so this is going to be very cold this is going to be membership function for cold this is going to be membership function for cool and suppose any temperature at 25 degrees is warm and any temperature around this up to plus minus 5 degrees is going to be uh, called as warm with varying degree of membership and then 35 is hot and minus uh, up to 25 degrees this hot temperature goes and we assign a membership like this so any temperature higher than 35 will be uh, hot but any temperature less than this will be assigned reducing membership values now I should mention one thing here that these membership functions have been plotted here in a symmetrical form and in a linear fashion but in the real life situation these perceptions are not always symmetrical like this on this side and on this side the way we have I have drawn symmetrical it's not going to be like that and even it's not going to be linear it may be non-linear like this or like this it may be having this slope here maybe this slope here it depends upon the perception and in real life situations our perceptions are not always symmetrical and linear and one thing more that I would like to add is that we can have even more terms like here we have one two three four five so these five terms we are using here but we can have even more terms like extremely cold very very cold and cold mild cold then cold then cool then less warm warm very warm then hot very hot like this but if we are going to increase the number of uh, membership functions then when ultimately we go for its application then this results in the computation so the more membership functions we have we are going to have more competition involved now suppose uh, we take a temperature on this line so this line will take like this suppose we take a temperature here which is minus 3 degrees centigrade and we extend this line over this 
then we might be getting corresponding membership value let us use color white here for, for this membership function we will use white and for this function let us use here it is cutting so let us use this so in very cold its membership value is suppose is going to be 0.75 then due to its symmetry symmetry of this uh, membership functions and being linear this value will be 0.25 so it means that this temperature which we have here is going to to have membership value 0.25 grade of membership in cold it is going to be 0.75 and as far as very cold is concerned is going to be 0.75 now if we look at other membership functions cool uh, for example cool this one then this temperature is not uh, going to intersect with this membership function it means that its grade of membership in this is zero so because this is like we can assume it like this so it's having non zero function uh, non zero membership value only from 5 degree centigrade to 25 degree centigrade so we can say that minus 3 is regarded as very cold and cold at the same time of course with varying degree of membership value this temperature we can write in terms of the membership functions so we can say that minus 3 degree centigrade is an array where we are first writing very cold so membership value in very cold is 0.75 then next is cold membership value here is 0.25 and for this temperature i am writing minus 3 degree centigrade and minus 3 degree centigrade is not having any corresponding value because it is passing here so it's not touching here this membership function this membership function so its value will be membership value in cool, cool is zero and membership value in warm is also zero and in hot is also zero so this corresponds to very cold this corresponds to cold this value and this value corresponds to cool this corresponds to warm and this corresponds to hot here you can see that we are assigning these temperatures some terms like this <coughs> very cold cold and this so for to assign some terms to this uh, linguistic variable temperature like this one this one and these terms we need some syntax with us so this is this job is done through syntax rules which we mentioned here that is set of syntax rules then these terms are being assigned some membership values here and this cool is assigned this membership value warm is assigned this membership value this membership value so this assignment which we are doing uh, for term to different membership values this corresponds to semantics which means that we are assigning some meaning the correct spelling will be s e so semantics so we are assigning some meanings to these terms so now you can see that we are covering all the these terms linguistic variable Uh, associated with linguistic variable like set of terms syntax semantics which we have seen here so this this is a linguistic variable then set of terms tx then syntax rules and semantic rules and of course we have universe of discourse with us so we can say that semantics are going to assign these terms to actual values and with the help of this membership functions 
membership functions we can get exact values in this form for corresponding to membership values and these values which we have here these values are our universe of discourse u which we have used here this one and i should add one thing more that this temperature is fuzzy set and this part which we have here is actually fuzzy subset or rather fuzzy subsets so effectively what we have done here here we were having words and here we are having some numbers so these words have been converted to numbers and job of fuzzy logic is this to convert words in the form of numbers and we do this conversion because our current computers can deal only with numbers they cannot operate with words so i will stop here and we will discuss next topic in the next lecture further extension how to use this Uh, linguistic variables for some applications thank you